This is a demonstration of hardware software co-development using the Mentor Embedded Sorcery Code Bench Virtual Edition for Software Debug and Mentor Graphics Veloce Emulator for Hardware Debug. To start, I'll run the Veloce graphical user interface and use that to download the design into the Veloce Emulator. This design consists of a Cortex M3 processor, some memory for program and data storage, and a custom hardware accelerator. Then I'll use Sorcery Code Bench Virtual Edition to develop the software, and then debug it through a virtual JTAG probe that's connected to the processor. The premise for this demonstration is that the software has a set of data samples which need to be processed using the hardware accelerator. The software writes each sample into the hardware accelerator, then reads back the results, checking for errors along the way. The first step is to run the Veloce software, which provides the user interface to the emulator. When the software starts, it automatically loads the hardware design files. All of the signals associated with the design are shown here. After the design is loaded, the emulation begins running. This is analogous to turning on the power on a real hardware system. Now that the design is running in the emulator, I'll start CodeBench Virtual Edition. The Code Debug Demo project includes the source code for the program. In this case, there's just one C file. The outline view on the right shows the contents of the file, making it easy to navigate to any point in the code. Now I'll finish writing the code, save the file, and rebuild the project. Now I'm ready to start debugging my program. So I open the debug configurations, choose the Code Debug Demo debug option, and in the Debugger tab, we see that I've selected the Virtual Sorcery Probe. So when I click the Debug button, it launches the Virtual Probe and connects to the Veloce design through the JTAG transactor. Then, CodeBench switches to the debug perspective and execution stops at the entry point of main. I'll step over the first statement to reset the CDD hardware accelerator. The next statement acquires a data sample in the sample buffer, so let me add the sample buffer to my expression view. Then I'll step over the acquire data sample function. This gives me an array of data to be processed by the CDD hardware accelerator. Next, the program will process the data set, so let me look at the results buffer as well. Now I'll step over the process data set function, and interestingly, we only got one result. All the rest of the results are still zero, so that doesn't make sense. When I look at the variables view, I see the status indicates an error condition. It does not say EST OK as expected, it says EST not empty. So we discovered some kind of defect in the program or in the hardware. Let's take a look at the state of the hardware at this point. I can move to the register view and see the general purpose registers of the processor, but I can also see the I.O. registers for the CDD hardware accelerator. And in the control register, we see two flags to indicate the state. But both the full flag and the empty flag are set at the same time, and that makes no sense. The CDD can't be full and empty at the same time. To track down the source of the problem, I want to set a breakpoint where the software first detects the problem. So I use the outline view to scroll down to the function where errors are reported. And I'll set a software breakpoint here. But before I run the program, I want to go back to the Veloce software and set it up to capture all the hardware activity leading up to the breakpoint event. So I'll download this predefined trigger, which will stop waveform capture in the Veloce when the program hits a breakpoint. This trigger monitors the debug halted signal of the Cortex processor. When the processor is halted, the signal is a 1. When we start running the code, the halted signal will go to a 0. And when a breakpoint is hit, debug halted will go to a 1, and that will stop waveform capture in the Veloce thereby retaining all the hardware activity prior to the breakpoint. Now we'll go back to CodeBench and run the program. And sure enough, we stop at the breakpoint when we, the software wants to report an error. And in the trigger diagram, we see that we've moved down to the end state. And in the Veloce screen, we can see that the trigger has matured and tracing has been turned off at the trigger position. So let's take a look at the waveforms 
and see what the hardware was doing right before it hit the breakpoint. First, it uploads the raw information from the Veloce box into the software. Then it generates the waveform display. Once the waveforms are ready, I'll open the viewer and select the signals of interest, namely those in the CDD hardware accelerator. Here we see the clock, the address, from which the particular register select is derived. There's a request signal and a write signal to indicate that we're accessing it and whether it's read or write. And the two signals on the bottom are the empty flag and full flag. The red line on the end is where the trigger event happened. So that's when the software breakpoint was hit. And we can see sir, shortly before that, that the empty flag and the full flag were both set right at this access. Now we know the error occurred right when the software was performing a read of address zero, which is the control register. But we don't really know where the code was when this happened. So that's the next step in debugging is to see where we were in the code when the bug happened. To find out where the code was executing when this problem happened, we want to turn the triggering around. We want to use a Veloce trigger on the error condition to stop program execution at that point in time. So we close that, go back to Codebench, stop the program, and start debugging from the very beginning again. Since restarting the program doesn't change the hardware state, we're going to step over the statement that resets the CDD, thereby clearing the error condition. So now we'll go back to Veloce and define the trigger. This trigger just waits for the empty flag to be one and the full flag to be one and then stops right away and sends a signal to the virtual probe to stop the software execution at that point. So now let's go back to Codebench and run the program. And when program execution stops, we can look in the probe console window and see here it says target halted due to emulation trigger. And in the emulation trigger diagram, we see it has in fact move down to the end state. And by looking at the hardware registers, we can confirm that we are in the error state. Specifically, both the empty flag and the full flag have been set. So now we can see where we were in the code. Main, called process data set, called CDD read result. And here, just after we read the result register, we're reading the control register. That's where the error took place. There doesn't really appear to be anything wrong with the software here. We read this results register and stored it in the buffer. Then we checked the control register flags, perfectly normal. Since there doesn't appear to be anything wrong with the software, let's take a look at the hardware side. This is the HDL for the CDD module. And this is the implementation of the hardware accelerator. This code block shows what happens when we're right to the CDD sample register. We set the empty flag to zero and we set the full flag to one. Here we show the operation for a read of the CDD result register. We're setting the empty flag to one, but we're not clearing the full flag when the results are read. So the bug here is a missing statement in the hardware design file. This demonstration showed some of the benefits of hardware software co-debug using Sorcery Codebench Virtual Edition in conjunction with the Mentor Graphics Veloce emulator. Software development and system integration can begin much earlier in the development cycle. Hardware can be exercised using the actual software, and if a hardware problem is discovered, there's visibility into the design that's not possible with actual hardware. And any problems found this early in the design can be fixed in hardware instead of by some elaborate software workaround.